to Soko Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. Six Towns Radio for a Thursday. Get you ready for my massive Easter break. But I thought it'd be nice to have a guest on today. And I can pick him. Uh, he was on a couple of years ago. He's a bit of a legend to me. And everyone knows something that Simon Greenall's done. So welcome to Six Towns Radio again, Simon. How are you doing, mate? Hello, hello Six Towns Radio. Yes. Yes, big fans of your work, sir, and um, so much to talk about. Uh, I don't know where to start, actually. Where should we start? Let's start with... Um, I know what we can start with. Uh, it's a film, uh, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. We can talk about that in a bit, but what I want to start with is Pete versus Life. We didn't talk about that a lot last time. Oh, uh, uh, right, yeah. And um, it's something you've been involved with. What series are they on now? Is it the third series that was just... Uh, we've, we've only done two. They're, yeah. they're, not, they're not making another one. They're not? They're not. <laughs> <laughs> you... You said it the same way I said it. They're yeah. not! What? Uh, yeah, no, they're not, I'm afraid. Well, that was really good. I liked the format of that. I, I really liked it as well, but um, mm. I think the Americans are going to go for it. The Americans are going to buy the format. Ah. It, it's, a, it's a very kind of American idea. You can see the Americans going, oh, yeah, we, we could go for that. Mm. I can see that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything happens like that. The Americans will recast the sports presenters. They will oh. not go, oh, let's have that fat bloke and the thin bloke for England. No. <laughs> They'll have somebody um, like um, Ron Burgundy, won't they, doing it? Yeah, it'll be somebody uh, <laughs> good and expensive. <laughs> yeah, so much has gone on last time we spoke. Cause it must have been three years ago. And, um, right. Of course, then, um, Alexander the Meerkat was in its infancy. Now oh, it's, he, was, he was just a pop. Yeah, no, it's massive. Um, it's <laughs> one of the biggest advertising campaigns on the TV. Uh, yeah, has been. Um, you're up against uh, another uh, famous uh, comparable website, and that guy gets more stick than you'll ever get because you're hiding. <laughs> you're hiding behind a puppet. <laughs> well, I'm I'm small, cute, and furry. Yeah, and he's large. Um, and there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when you first started that, we talked about it because it was just picking up, and uh, yeah. it, was, it was getting big then. Did you think it'd be as big as it has been? No, we had we had no idea it was going to get this kind of um, huge, this crazy. Um, and now there's, there's new technology now where I can talk and he can animate in real time. Ah. So we can we can now do interviews and stuff. We did an interview on uh, this morning with <laughs> Philip Schofield, and it, and it went really really well. And we've we've done a couple of um, kind of live conferences for the insurance industry, and people are just amazed because I I, I can see the audience, so I can pick people out of the audience. And say, oh, you know, the lady in the red dress, have you got a question? And <laughs> they, they kind of freak out. <laughs> of course they would, yeah. <laughs> I can remember when I was younger and we went to Blackpool uh, for a day trip, there was a clown in a glass case. And when you walk past it, that used to say things to you. That would be very similar to that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. And, cause it, and it changes it completely. You think, oh my God, it's, it's live, you can see it, you can really see it. Mm. <laughs> but also, since the last time we've spoken, um, Sergey has become very popular. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everybody likes Sergey. Yeah, they do. Um, I had Sergey Puppet when I updated my car insurance, and I've had, <laughs> I've had the new one, the one with the leather jacket as well. What's his name? Um, uh, Vasily. Yes, yes. Yeah. Have you got all the toys? No, I haven't. <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I did ask for a set because I was going to give them to charity, and um, they, they never came through. So, no, I didn't get a, I didn't get a set. Oh, never mind. Anyway, you know, I get compensated in another way. <laughs> you get cheap car insurance. <laughs> 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 um, I cannot buy a chick current <laughs> Last time we spoke as well, you told us uh, you let the cat out the bag, or well, the mere cat out the bag, that you do the noise at the end. That is your own. <coughs> yes. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> you just came up with that and added it on the end. Well, no, I, I, used to, I used to do that noise to, uh, to uh, confuse our cat. <laughs> uh, and but yeah, yeah, no, but I've, I've always done that noise. Yeah. That's yours. That's yours. You, you, do you get like a bit of um, commission on that? No. Oh, unfortunately not. <laughs> it's not like I can, use, I can use it anywhere else or sell it in any way. <laughs> <laughs> Where we sat in Stoke-on-Trent, there's a place called Mir, and I'm sure there's some comparable cats running around, but uh, somebody's missed a trick then. We could have yeah. some Stoke-on-Trent insurance place maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But yes, uh, at the top of the interview, you did mention the film, the Alan Partridge film that's coming out. Um, yes. Uh, it's this year, isn't it, it's coming out? Uh, I think it's out on the, uh, I think it's something like the 8th of August. It's, it's, it's very early August it's come, it comes out. Yes, and it's called Alpha Papa. Uh, well, the thing is, I'm not allowed to say too much about, mm -hmm. about the film, about yeah. what happens. 
Oh, we don't want to know what happens. We just well, want well, to know what, what, I can, what I can <laughs> say is, what I can say is, it's just like you already did. Oh, I'm Miss Potter, you're going to walk. I'm going to do the like, I'm Alan Partridge. I'm going to come and do it. I'm going to 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 do it. I'm <laughs> that, Michael, that's just noise. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it should be very, very funny. There's some very, we've done some very, very funny stuff in it. Yes. Oh, I bet some of it's improvised, isn't it? A lot of it's scripted. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it's improvised, a lot of it's on the hoof, a lot of it changes uh, by the minute. Um, the script is forever being rewritten. But it, 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 it drives you mad at the time, but then later on you think, oh, that's good that we did that, because it, it makes it much fresher and funnier and, and uh, more pertinent. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we nearly froze to death on uh, Chroma Pier. We were filming on Chroma Pier in Norfolk, and it was minus seven in the wind. Whoa. <laughs> That's not great, is it? Yeah. <laughs> not great. All right, you said you can't tell us a lot about the script, but can you tell us if there's a cup of beans or a steak and kidney pie in the film? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, a <laughs> there's a new thing that uh, happens to Michael, which people will be shouting out when yes. they see me. Um, <laughs> And it'll be, it's to do with the lunchbox. Ah, okay. So people, I'm sure that in the future, because people, you know, people who are fans of the show now shout out a cup of beans and stuff like that. Yeah. But after they've seen the film, they will be shouting out about my lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you get that shouted at you down the street, don't you, a cup of beans? <laughs> hey, cup of beans! Go, oh, yes, yes, I've never heard anybody <laughs> shout that to me before. And are people confused with the fact you're not a Geordie? The, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of... Um, a surprise in their eyes. They go, oh, so you're not a Geordie? No, I'm not a Geordie. But they're often, but then I say, oh, I'm not a Geordie, I'm from near Carlisle. And then they go, so you are a Geordie? <laughs> no, 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 forget it. Uh, so no, a lot of people are surprised I'm not a Geordie. Yeah, um, a couple of years ago, um, you were asked to voice some characters for Viz for Channel 4, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, we did, um, we did, uh, anyway, we did Sid the Sexist Lake, you know. <laughs> we did our lad, and, we did the, and uh, Steve and I, uh, Steve Coogan and I did the fat slags, yeah. <laughs> and, um... Roger oh, Melly, you were Tom in Roger Melly, weren't you? Right. Yes, I was, uh, I was Tom in Roger Melly, oh, come on, Roger, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do like Tom, the long-suffering sidekick producer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roger. <laughs> yeah, but the, 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 uh, Steve, Steve was in New York, um, doing it over the phone, and I was in London. I, I did say that I should go to New York and do it with him, but they yeah. didn't go for that. And Sarah Millican was another voice on there as well. Yes, yeah, uh, I Sarah Millican, she was in there as well, you know. <laughs> and I was acting, I was, I was acting alongside her. <laughs> I love this. It's something I grew up with, and uh, the characters. Uh, everyone knows I said the sexist. Everyone's got a mate who's quite cocky, um, a bit of a lad, but no success with the women whatsoever. Everyone knows somebody like that, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think all of his characters. <laughs> yeah, who talks a good gigolo but actually isn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cries himself to sleep. Yeah, I love his friends again because his friends, some of them believe what he's saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, actually, I like their haircuts. They've got those ridiculous... Yeah. It's a bit 80s, but they've got those ridiculous haircuts. They probably still have them in uh, Newcastle. <laughs> probably. <laughs> the, the 80s have just arrived up there. <laughs> yeah, so you had another chance to um, use your Geordie accent that you excel in so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, good to, it's good to get it out now and then, like, you know. <laughs> Are there any words um, that sound better in the Geordie accent besides a boot? A boot? Around in a boot. I boot. Uh, uh, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing, the thing to do is is, uh, is to go very high in the end, like. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do Anton Deck, could you? Uh, well, I, I, where are they from? Newcastle? Are they from uh, Middlesbrough? I'm not sure. Because Vic and Vic and Bob are from Middlesbrough, and that's, that's a, it's quite a bit different. It's, it's a bit sort of it's a bit deeper and a bit more like that, you know. Yeah. It's a lot more general. Yeah, I, I could see uh, when you do the high pitch one. What's the character that Bob Mortimer does on? Vic oh, the the the, the Stott. Yes, the Stott. Donald and Davy Stott. <laughs> 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 Have you had the misfortune or fortune to watch um, Geordie Shore? Have you ever had to no, watch I, that? I, I haven't seen any of Geordie Shore because people have been talking about it. Saying, oh, you've got to see Geordie Shore. <clears throat> You'll get some good voices. And I thought, mm. well, I haven't, I haven't seen it. <laughs> but is it like is it like Housewives of Orange County? But Housewives of Orange. The fake tan. It's basically Big Brother, but they're allowed to go out. 
And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's quite it in a nutshell. Yeah. Basically, they've got like 10 people in a house and they're allowed to go out and get drunk and uh, they just film it all. Oh, Lord. And people watch that? <laughs> I'm afraid so. We've run out of real stars, haven't we? That's what it is, in entertainment and cabaret and stuff. <laughs> we just want to watch ourselves nowadays. <laughs> yeah, but Vic, and, Vic and Bob are big favourites of mine. Yeah. They, uh, when they were doing Shooting Stars, they had Richard E. Grant on the show. Yes. And Richard E. Grant will tell you very quickly that he grew up in Swaziland. And on the show, Vic and Bob said to him, So, Richard, where was it you uh, were born again? They said, Oh, it's uh, Swaziland. And Vic and Bob started to laugh, and they said, no, man, it's pronounced Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of uh, listener questions I want to ask you. Um, okay. Which would be quite nice. Um, have you ever thought of doing stand-up? Because you're quite a funny guy, and you can act, and you can do voiceovers. Would you like to take that to the stage? I, I used to do stand-up about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I used to go on <laughs> I used to go on as a Dutch comedian. Um <laughs> I was called Dick Van Dyke, the second funniest man in Holland. Oh. <laughs> and, and people used to, used to believe that I was, I was, that I was from Holland. Because uh, I, I used to sing in Dutch. And I used to, yeah, so I have done stand-up. Um, but I wouldn't go back to it. <laughs> it's, a young man, it's a young man's game. <laughs> um, you've done things like Doctor Who, Wimbledon, The Bill, etc. Uh, is that a change from the funny stuff to do something a bit more serious? It is. Um, it's because, because you, you, there's, there's no onus on you and there's no pressure on you to to get the gag right or to be funny mm. and it's quite it's quite it's quite relaxing and quite um straightforward because you think okay i'm just going to say the words and and, yeah. and feel the emotion i don't have to try and get the laugh i don't have to time the laugh i don't have to react in the right comedic way mm -hmm. so yeah straight acting is is nice <laughs> do you stand there just when you're on your own just shouting words out just to practice uh, I will often go around the house um, doing noises. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes, well, sometimes I'll hear somebody on the radio, and, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll start to do them. I'll start to do their, where they're from. Yes. I think, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. But I, I love little uh, ticks and quirks of language. Because um, around Burnley, around there, instead of um, until, they say while. So we'll say things like, well, it didn't get back while nine o'clock. Yeah. You think, wow, what a fantastic thing to say instead of until. But I know around Stoke, mm -hmm. there's some very, I mean, I can't do Stoke at no. all, but, but there's, isn't there a book of, uh, uh, isn't there something like after talk rate? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that's, rate is definitely one. Um, yeah. How at? Um, oh, right. Yes. You um, see, I, I, I love quirks of language like that. Because mm. I, I, I sometimes teach um, at drama school and, and in, in, in advertising. And I always say, if, you, if you're doing a character, use bad English. Mm. Or, or especially, even when you're writing, use bad English. Because people, especially in London, you know, when they're talking and all that, you know what I mean? They don't <laughs> use, like, proper English and nothing, do they? They use, like, the double negative. We haven't got none. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I always say, you know, if you, if you want to make a character believable, use bad English. Yeah. I can see that. With the Stoke-on-Trent accent, though, it, it's so difficult to do because it's not Bromie, it's not Mank, it's not Scouse, it's just somewhere well, it's, in it's between. The, it's the pottery, it's a very definite thing, isn't it? Mm, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we stand out on our own, but when you go abroad, people think you're either Mank, Scouse or Bromie. <laughs> they, can't, <laughs> they can't put the finger on it, so they just generalise and say, this is what you are, we want do to put say, you in a box. Do you say things like, all right, my duck? Uh, we say duck, yes, all right, but that's, but that's more Nottingham again, isn't it, really? Uh, I think they say me ducks in yeah. Derby and Nottingham, but we say duck, all right, duck. Okay. Yeah, we want that, it's ours, we, we're claiming that. It's, <laughs> there's a lot of things that Derby have tried to claim off. There's the oat cake, they say that's from Derby, but it's a Stoke on Trent thing, definitely, and duck. We, we're claiming them for his own. <laughs> uh, for, his, for his own, that's yes. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing uh, before you go... Um, there was a, a viral that he did on YouTube of you freaking out after doing um, a little bit of recording. <laughs> and it, it got so many hits, and people believed that you were actually freaking yeah. out. Uh, what was that in aid of? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a kind of, it's a bit of an industry joke, because I am known as the, <laughs> I'm known as the nicest bloke in the industry. Because okay. I, 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 never, I never ever lose my temper. I never, I never, I never get stroppy about a job i never i never say oh you know that's ridiculous I, I always just sort of roll over and do whatever they want so it was, it was uh, the idea of me being known for being the most amenable voice artist there is having having a freak out but also that studio were about to uh, revamp their facilities so all that was coming out the next day anyway yeah 
So that's why they said, oh, it'd be funny if you, if you freak out and smash <laughs> it up. <laughs> it looks so much fun, but it is quite it believable. To, it, had be, it had to be one take, yeah. because um, once you've smashed it up, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I've had so many voice artists on the line over the last two or three years, including uh, Marcus Bentley, Peter Dixon. Oh, yeah. Uh, from America, we've had uh, Larry Kenny. It's here too, and already there's a problem. <laughs> Jid is in the diary room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've had some from America, like Maggie Wheeler, who's the voice of Janice and Friends. She does like, a lot of cartoon oh, yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, Larry Kenny, who's the voice of Lion-O. I'd love yeah. to go out with all of you on a night out and just let go. I think that would be the best night out ever. It might be one of the longest nights of your life. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Not, not one of us is speaking in our own voice. It would drive you nuts. <laughs> I don't think it would. I think it would interest me. It really would. So anything else that you're up to besides, you know, what we've talked about today? Uh, what else am I up to? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually writing a children's series. I've okay. got a children's series that the BBC are uh, very interested in. Um, it's, uh, it's a live action thing for kids. It's kind of a perfect one-line pitch. It's called The Adventures of Danny McGee and His Family Tree. Ah. And it's about a little boy who goes to stay with what he thinks is his granddad, uh, but it turns out it isn't. And they've got a massive Victorian family tree. And whenever, whenever Danny's in trouble, someone can come out of the tree and help him. But it doesn't always go right. That's what you're working on at the moment. That's what I'm working on at the moment, yeah. And yeah. Then plus the usual sort of voice stuff, and we've been in doing some compare the market stuff today. Ah, for the next For the next bit of the campaign. <laughs> do you have to do anything um, to rest your voice, or is there any like, drinks or sweets or anything you have to take? No, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually forever um, uh, overworking it and, and, get, and going croaky and stuff, because I'll never say no. <laughs> They'll say, oh, if, if I'm doing like a video game, they say, oh, look, would you just do this bit of getting killed by a tiger? I think I'll do that. <laughs> and completely ruin my voice in the process. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Is there, before we go, is there a song that you'd like us to play for? We didn't ask you last time, but I'd like to play a song for Simon Green, or that's okay, if we've got it oh. on the system. Uh, um, well, and got to, <laughs> do you know what? Anything by the Smiths, because it takes me straight back to when I was at college. Okay, I'll tell you uh, what we've got in front of me by the Smiths. We can do something obvious like How Soon Is Now, Panic, uh, This Charming Man, Meet His Murder. Um, but we've got some other stuff on here, like there's, there's a light that never goes out, that's a bit of a tune. Uh, oh yeah, the light that never goes out, oh, that's fantastic. That's the one we should yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That takes, that takes me back to freezing to death in Manchester uh, in the 80s as a, as a drama student. <laughs> and that was in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's basically two seasons, June and winter. Uh, okay then, Sam, it's been fantastic having you on the show again. I'll very nice to talk to you again. Thank you very much for calling me. Oh, no problem at all. Would you like to introduce the Smiths, There's a Light That Never Goes Out, in any of your voices? That'd be fantastic. Okay, I'll do uh, Captain Barnacles from the Octonauts. Okay, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Smiths, and there is a light that never goes out. Barnacles out.
classic hits and today's biggest tunes. Six Sounds Radio.